Hey Kings Kids, this is Miss Lacey again. Let's go ahead and start with a prayer. Dear God, thank you for everything that you have given us. Thank you for blessing us with so many wonderful things. Please be with us. Please be with our country. Please be with our families. Please be um, with anyone who is sick right now. Help them to get well. Dear God, please help us to stay safe and um, help us to get to heaven and bring as many people with us as we can. Forgive us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I'd like to go ahead and start with our memory verse. And it's a short one. It should be pretty easy to remember. And I have a song to go with it. So I hope that that will help you remember it as well. It is rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And that is Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Let's go ahead and sing the song. You know what? I'm just going to keep it up on screen and I'll sing the song. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Always again I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Always again I say rejoice. So I hope that gets stuck in your head forever and ever because that's a good one. So is the rest of the Bible. But be always ready to give an answer, right? Um, so I'm going to start out by um, introducing. Um, so we're talking about how Jesus. Um, he went, uh, in Matthew chapter 5, he went up on a mountain, uh, probably near the Sea of Galilee, and he preached a lesson. And one of the things that he talked about in his sermon was what we call the Beatitudes, or a list of behaviors that we need to practice in order to be better people and better servants for God. And, uh, we call that the Sermon on the Mount. I have a picture right here of someone that, you know, may have looked like Jesus. We don't know exactly what he looked like, but someone maybe who looks like that. And he uh, was talking to a bunch of people. He went up on the mountain so that people could hear him and see him better. And uh, because there were multitudes, and multitudes mean lots and lots of people. Um, and so um, we're going to talk about the Beatitudes. There are four of them. Oh, not four. There's eight of them. Um, so I'll start with what I'll do is I'll go over, e I'll mention each one, and then I'll tell you what each of them mean. So the first one is, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So basically, we can't please God if we act stuck up, full of ourselves, um, and think that we don't have to follow His rules. We have to be humble. We have to put God first in all things. The next one is, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So, to mourn means to be very sorrowful, sad, um, feel bad for something that has happened. So, if you did something wrong, you need to, you need to feel bad about it so that you can change and not do that again. And God wants us to mourn over things that we did wrong so we can change. And also, that can also mean times that we feel really sad. Um, we can always go to God for comfort and to Christians and read His Word and we can pray. You know, that applies to that too. But mostly, when we do something wrong, we need to feel bad about it and we need to change. Um, I love my daughter. Um, sometimes she thinks that she can just say, oh, sorry, and then do it again. But, you know, we are trying to teach her that when you say sorry, it means you have to change. You have to go back and you have to fix it and you, you can't do it again. So that's what mourning, and you'll be comforted. 
The next is, blessed are the meek, or the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. So being gentle does not mean that you're weak. Um, meekness is not weakness. It's strength under control. And the good illustration of meekness is, of course, Jesus, but an example that, you know, a lot of kids like to talk about, if any of you are into the superheroes, Superman. He's so strong. He has laser vision. He could topple everything in a second, you know, in the, in the stories, in the comics, in the movies, but he chooses not to. He has a huge amount of self-control and we need to be like that. We need to have self-control. Even though we can do something, it doesn't always mean that we should. So we need to learn how to control ourselves. And sometimes that also means letting others have a turn, you know, letting others make a choice, not having everything our way all the time. Of course, you know, unless it goes against the Bible, then of course you need to stand up for God, of course. But I'm talking about little things like when you're playing games, let someone else tr take a turn or let someone else um, make a choice of what game you're going to play. Um, and also have some self-control. Um, another thing is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I want you to close your eyes and think about your favorite food in the entire world. I know it's almost, uh, if you're, if you're seeing this, it might be, it might be three o'clock or it might be later. Maybe you're hungry for dinner and you're, but I want you to, you might be hungry right now and that's going to help my illustration a little bit. Think about your favorite food in the entire world and it might make you really hungry. Think about a time also when you were playing really hard and you were really, really thirsty. And when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, that's what that means. You should desire God's will. You should desire to read the Bible and be close to God that much. As hungry as you are for your favorite food, as thirsty as you are for that water, you should be that, you should have that strong desire for God. And it says that if you have that desire, you will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. In other words, forgive others who hurt you. Um, treating others as you want to be treated when you make a mistake. You don't want people to be mean to you when you make a mistake because we make mistakes and you're going to mess up. They're, you're human. You're going to mess up. And you don't want people to be mean to you when you mess up. So you should be kind to others when they mess up. You should forgive. The measure that you forgive is the measure that you're going to be forgiven by God. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to work really hard to forgive. Um, blessed, are the, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. A pure or clean heart is a heart without any trash in it. In other words, you need to be careful what you do. Be careful what you say who you spend your time around, be careful where you go, and so on and so forth. You have to make sure that the way that you are at your core and the way that you are when you go around represents God, represents Jesus. So you can't, you have to be pure in heart, innocent. You have to be blameless. You're going to make mistakes, but you have to try as hard as you can to have a clean heart. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. In other words, help people get along, don't cause trouble, and avoid, avoid conflict, avoid trouble. Without, of course, you know, um, you know, if someone is doing something, if someone is, is um, doing something that they shouldn't and you really are trying to help them do the right thing, that's a different situation. We should always stand up for what's right and stand up for God. Um, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There was a time back then when people they would get seriously hurt if they stood up for God. We don't have to worry about that so much today 
but sometimes you might be mistreated or made fun of if you stand up for Jesus or you live your life in a godly way. And no matter what happens, even if it does come to a world where we're really truly persecuted, you should always, as my dad always told me, you should always grab hold of God and never let go. And we should always follow God no matter what. And we, you know, if we do all these things, we're going to be blessed. We're going to go to heaven someday, and that's going to be so wonderful. So speaking of Jesus and His love and living for Jesus, I'm going to have another song. And you know me, I love sign language, so I'm going to incorporate sign language. We're going to sing Jesus Loves Me. We sang another verse last time, but we're going to sing a different verse this time. So get your hands up, ready to sign. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. So if you want to learn those signs, rewind the video and play it again until you get the signs. It's also a very good idea to learn some sign language because that's a whole group of people that you can tell them about Jesus. Just a simple message of telling them, hey, you know, you are loved. Jesus loves you. If you can, if you can talk to a whole new group of people, I mean, that's great. That's glorifying God. Let's go ahead and um, end by, uh, or almost end, by talking about, you know, I have games. One of them is uh, for the older kids, Beatitudes Ball. What you can do is get, you need some paper, and you can write the first part of every Beatitudes, wad it up, and then someone can grab a wad and throw it at someone and they can catch it and they open it up, they read the first part and then they finish it. So an example, if you get a wadded piece of paper that says, blessed are the poor in spirit, you would finish it by saying, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven and so on and so forth with the other Beatitudes. That's Beatitudes ball. And for the little kiddos, you can either have a yellow piece of paper or a white piece of paper and draw a little bee on it. You can either leave it like a bee or you can, for if they're old enough, you can have them write or parents, you can write the Beatitudes on the bee to help them remember. And you can rewind this to the beginning of the lesson and every time you hear the word blessed, you can play pass the bee. So those are the fun little games that we can do. And uh, last but not least, let's go ahead and end with a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for allowing us to have a good study. And please help us to take your word and live it and apply it to our lives. Help us to get to heaven. Bring as many people with us. Help us to be safe. Forgive us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, thank you for tuning in. Have a nice week.